Welcome to Echevarria Travel, where we deliver all destinations from pole to pole. Whether it's tickets to a local event, a group bus trip, air travel for families, or cruises, we are here to lighten the load and take the stress out of planning your trip. We offer excellent travel packages for everyone, and we specialize in providing travel assistance to the special needs and disabilities community. Echevarria Travel provides education and information on traveling with medical conditions and accessibility options in airports, on cruises, and in foreign countries. Before you give up on taking that dream trip because you have special needs that seem to make it too difficult, please contact us for a consultation first. Echevarria Travel's award-winning founder, Cheryl Echevarria, loves to travel and has personally overcome the challenges of traveling with blindness and special medical needs. Call us today at 631-456-5394 for a free consultation about your trip and explore the world with Echevarria Travel. Here we go. Good morning, everybody. Cheryl Echeverria, and this is Talk Travel with Cheryl. Welcome. If this is the first time you are listening or watching us here on YouTube, remember to hit the subscribe button. If you're listening to us on your favorite podcast station, make sure you subscribe. You'll get an update in your email when we come to you every Friday morning at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, a little bit about Echeverria Travel, we're a full service travel agency. We've been serving all U U.S. residents since 2008. We prefer do preferred baby boomers, special needs, uh, our military families, and anybody that loves to travel. We do individuals and small groups, so we do a lot for a lot of people. And our biggest thing is enjoy life, enjoy travel, because it educates you and it brings you more joy in life. And also remember, traveling is a luxury. We don't do it every day. So let, uh, my dad used to say that because you enjoy it more when you know that it's a special occasion and not just an everyday thing. This week's guest is Mr. Tom Muldoon. He's my business development manager with MSC Cruise Lines. Uh, they're one of the big four out there now. Um, you may know about the other three, but a lot of people still are not familiar with MSC. Tom will be giving us a little bit of a history, uh, some great news coming out of Port Canaveral, and also a wonderful cruise that I am doing in April for our April people. So without further ado, Mr. Tom will do from MSC Cruise Lines. Good morning, Tom. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good, Cheryl. How are you doing this morning? Great to see your lovely face. It's been so long, and I hope uh, you and your family are great doing this new normal, as we're calling it, the great pause, as we say. Yeah, right. Exactly. Thanks. I hope you're doing well, too. And uh, with Tom also being a travel agent, uh, BBM's uh, biz, uh big thing is working with travel agents. He's on top of getting us the latest information, the protocols, webinars, you name it. Tom has done it. Tom mm -hmm. has also done live events with me here in the East Orlando area. So when mm -hmm. we are live again, I will be asking Tom to come out again and, and uh, you know, do more on MSC with me because they're a great company. So Yeah, we look uh, forward to it. How long have you been with MSC or and in the travel industry? Oh boy. Well, I've been in the travel industry now. It's been uh, 30 years. Hard to believe. Um, I spent uh, 10 years at a little company called uh, Premier Cruise Lines. You might remember the big red boats out of Port Canaveral. Uh, we were the official uh, cruise line of Disney before Disney had their own ships and spent uh, 10 years at uh, uh, NCL. And I've been uh, at MSC now for uh, a little over four years. Wonderful. So it's going good, yes, since 2016. Great, great. Uh, how about giving us a little bit, like I said, uh, MSC is becoming one of the big names out there, but still here in the U.S. 
U.S. citizens really don't know who MSC is, so can you give us a little history about MSC Cruise Line? Yeah, I sure can. Um, I'll start back a little bit because people don't really know what MSC stands for. And MSC itself stands for the Mediterranean Shipping Company, which is basically our parent company. Um, the parent company has like 500. We're the second largest uh, shipping container company in the world. We have over 500 ships that deliver goods and services all over the world. And um, so MSC Cruises actually came about really in, in uh, right at the end of, uh, of 1999, 2000. Um, when we started building our first ships. So uh, we've only really been in business about 20 years, but, um, but we're just growing like crazy. Uh, we're a European company. We were initially based in, uh, in Italy and now our, our headquarters is in Geneva, but the company is really uh, run by an Italian family. Uh, we're, we're privately owned by uh, the Aponte family. So we're not uh, answering to shareholders or anything like that and, and, and stockholders. So, uh, like I said, it gives us the autonomy to, to do the things we want to do. And, and what that is, is to become uh, the world's number one cruise line. So, uh, you know, starting from one ship back in, uh, in 2000 to now we have, well, we have 17 ships sailing and we've got uh, a few more coming out next year. And, and after that, we've got even more coming out. So we're just growing like crazy. We're the leading cruise line over in Europe. And, um, and so our, our next place to really grow our, our business is here in the U S. So, um, we've been here in the U S, um, sailing on a year round basis since about 2014 and, uh, up to, uh, to four ships, uh, here in the U S now. So, so things are going very, very well. well with, I the, remember with the exception of this little pause we've taken the last few months. <laughs> exactly. And, I remember when the Davina first came out, I was still living in New York and I got, had, you know, I, I had a ship tour of her. I got pictures that I'm always sharing and what, what a big, it's, it's not so much a big difference that, I mean, there, there's big differences between you guys and, and the, and the other ones. And what I like is that international, little more classic feeling than some of the American cruise lines, which is not bad, but at the same time, it might be different to U.S. Uh, U.S. travelers than yeah. than the big three. It's a positive thing. I love the fact that you know you get on the ship and you, and you smell the bed, bread baking in the oven, and you got the Italian food and all the handmade food on the ship and the gelato. Yeah. And who can go wrong with Sophia Loren sweets? I mean, you can <laughs> name all your sweets after Sophia Loren, one of my favorite actresses. And it's they're, they're gorgeous, gorgeous ships, and, and very well made and beautifully done. So, yeah, uh, yeah, we are we are a little different than the other cruise lines here in the U.S. I mean, we are a European company, and um, we bring that flair to our ships and our experience when, when they're over here in the Caribbean as well as when they're in Europe. So it is a different experience for, for the U.S. guests to come and cruise on us. I love it. I mean, I love being on the ship when you've got, you know, tons of different nationalities on board. It's not just the same people you might run into at the mall or shopping or, or even on a vacation and, you know, somewhere else in the U.S. So you've got all these international clientele, very interesting people to meet. The ships themselves are just... Uh, beautifully well appointed. I mean, you mentioned the Davina. She's probably the most elegant ship I've ever, I've ever seen. And the newer ships are, are different and, and innovative and modern. And uh, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, the, 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 the product that we offer is definitely different than what the other guys offer, but it's an excellent product. And we, and we like the fact it's different. Yes. Everybody has their, their own um, differences. And that's why I make sure to tell my client, like, what do you want? What are you looking for? and educate the client and not just sell the client. That's what Echeveria Travel is all about. And that's why we bring you guys on my show to educate my clients as well. So we have all that going on. What is going on with MSC, especially with uh, Miss Corona? What, what kind of things are happening and uh, the protocols and all that good stuff. So well, let me go over briefly. So. This all, you know, this all really started back the really the first second week of March, and so we've had to cancel sailings. And right now, am I still muted? No, no, you're not. You, you're good. Sorry, oh, my fault. I had a message pop. Okay, so um, 
Yeah, so, so since the beginning of March, we've had to, to cancel sailings here in the U.S. and over in Europe. And, you know, we started out canceling out for a couple of months, and then we had to extend it again and again. And so right now for the U.S., we're not expected to sail until November 1st. Um, no other cruise lines right now are sailing right now. But the big news is, is that, uh, you know, three weeks ago, we, uh, we have the Grandiosa sailing out of Genoa in the Western Mediterranean. She's the very first large cruise ship uh, to resume operations. And she's on her third, uh, her third one week cruise uh, this week. And uh, things are going very, very well. Um, we have implemented some extreme protocols over in Europe uh, to be able to get back into the cruising business. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so far they're working. They're a lot more stringent than what is required in Europe. And we feel taking the necessary steps and, and, and overdoing it has really benefited us. So if you want, I can talk a little bit about some of the different things that we're doing in Europe as far as our safety protocols. Would you like me to kind of go into oh, that? Oh yeah, please. And since you were sailing November 1st, are you bringing any of that over to the U.S. market with the protocols? Well, most likely yes, but we don't really know exactly what the U.S. protocols are going to be until the CDC really, we get a little bit closer to a sailing date and the CDC releases that stuff. Um, but again, uh, over in Europe, um, it's, it's done very, very well to protect our, uh, our guests and our crew and, and, and the ship uh, as well. So it's done very, very well. So basically what we're doing is Europe is a little farther advanced than, than the U.S. as far as testing. So people can readily get tests very easily um, when they need to travel or if they need to travel. So we, first of all, we require everybody have a test within 72 hours of boarding the ship. So when they show up at the terminal, they have to have a negative test result in hand that has been done in the past three days. So that's the first thing we do. We also stagger the embarkation so that all the guests aren't showing up at the terminal at once. And we strictly enforce it. So that way, we know how many people are going to be showing up at the terminal at, 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 at every time. So we're able to kind of, you know, manage the social distancing, distancing aspect of all of this. Then in Europe, in Genoa, we actually do a test of the guests before they get on board the ship. They have rapid testing there. We give them a COVID-19 test in the terminal, and then they go and they go into a waiting room, and then we wait and see. The results take about 45 minutes to an hour. If the test is clear, they're allowed on board. If the test is positive, they are not allowed on board, and anybody they may have traveled with to the destination, let's say in a, in a car or a taxi, would not be allowed to board either. Um, also, if the guest shows up at the terminal with a fever or with any other symptoms, again, they're not allowed to board the ship. So you pretty much have to have to have a negative test as well as not show any symptoms to be able to board the ship in the first place. Well, that's so, a good thing to do because I think at any, I mean, I know that uh, especially the Caribbean is doing that. Uh, there, even if you have the test, you're flying there. If you're mm -hmm. testing, like you just said, they're not even going to let you out of the airport. So a lot of right. places are doing that. So you're you're definitely keeping up with everybody else, which is good to this point. Yeah, and so that's the that's the guests. So we have crew as well. So the crew before they ever leave their home company, their home country, to come to Italy to board our ships to work with us. They're tested before they leave their home country. When they get to Italy to do our training, they're tested again. And then before they get on board the ship, they're tested again so that they are tested before they're, they're right before they board the ship to make sure that, that, uh, that no crew is infected. Um, cleaning on board the ships has been stepped up. Um, uh, a heavy duty hospital, uh, hospital grade cleaners are used now as opposed to anything that we may have used in the past. Um, Areas are completely cleaned over and over again, especially those high traffic areas like handrails and elevator buttons and things like that that are going to get touched all the time. Um, oh boy, God, there's so many different different things we're doing on board. Um, we practice so social distancing. So when you go in the theater, we don't fill the whole theater up. We stagger the seats. So we have social distancing in that way. Um, the buffets themselves are buffets, but you don't serve yourself. The crew is basically serving everybody in the buffet area. Um, shore excursions. Um, we sell shore excursions and we also even offer some free shore excursions now because 
to, to get off the ship in a different port of call, you have to have an organized MSC shore excursion. If you don't have an excursion, you can't get off the ship. We need to control the passengers and who they come in contact with and keep them basically in a small bubble. So guests ha cannot get off the ship without a shore excursion. Like I said, we offer free shore excursions in every single port. So we're not, you know, gouging the guests and making them pay. But if they want to do some other shore excursions, there are costs. And then like city tours and things like that, you know, they can do it no charge. So they can get off the ship and, and, see, the, and, and see the port of call. You have to stay with your tour group. And, uh, and this was found out on the very first cruise of the Grandiosa, a family decided uh, in Naples to leave the tour group and go off on their own for a little while. Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, when they got back to the ship, they were not allowed to reboard the ship. They broke the bubble. They're not allowed to reboard. We don't know who they came in contact with. So we can't let them back on the ship. So uh, we, we received very, very good press for that move. I mean, it's an unfortunate move that we had to make uh, for those people. But uh, you know, they, they did break the rules. They signed a contract when they did the shore excursion, they broke the rules. So we didn't let them back on board the ship. They could have infected people. We, you know, they could have unknowingly been infected themselves. So we, we just don't know. So those things are all going on on the ship um, uh, to keep, uh, to keep um, uh, uh, the passengers safe, the crew safe. We're only filling the ships up right now as many as, uh, as high as 70%. We're not gonna fill, fill a ship fill the ship at 100% capacity. We also have 10% of the cabins set aside for quarantine use. So if anybody were to come down with anything while they were on board the ship, we can quarantine them. And that was a big issue that happened back in, back in February and March when this all broke in the cruise industry. Nobody knew what to do with somebody who, who was infected. And now we know what to do with them. So we can quarantine them and then we have agreements with all the different ports of call that we can either leave them on board the ship in quarantine or they can be removed from the ship and put in, put in quarantine in that in one of our cities that we are visiting uh, um, on our cruise. Um, so either way, depending on what's going to be best. So we have those options as well. So again, we're on our third sailing. We haven't had any issues yet. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Um, we think this is great for the whole industry. I mean, having somebody, I'm glad it's us to be first, but, but anybody going first would have been good to, to, to get back into cruising. You know, we all want to cruise. We know oh, your yes, guests want to cruise. And, yeah, so we're very happy, very proud of the fact that we're cruising. And, uh, you know, one other thing I want to mention is it seems like some of the, you know, some of the other um, companies out there are a little stagnant right now because, you know, without people traveling, it, it's tough to move forward and grow your business if you're a, a cr another cruise line or something like that. But I just want to let everybody know that MSC is fully moving forward and we've had some really big things happen just in the last month. I mean, our largest ship ever, the MSC Europa is coming out and we had the coining ceremony for it last month. That's big news. So the, the ship was not delayed. We did the coining ceremony. The new ship, the Seashore, that's coming to Miami in, uh, in November of next year, we did the float out on her. So she is floating now uh, and, and we're finishing her up and she'll be done next year. Yeah. She was delayed somewhat with the coronavirus and the shipyards uh, having to stop uh, uh, building for a little while. But her first thing is she's going into Europe before she comes to the US. So her first few Europe sailings are delayed, but she will come into the US in November down to Miami. So we're looking forward to that. And then of course we have the Grandiosa sailing. So we're the only cruise line that has a ship sailing right now. So it's very, very positive news for MSC as we move forward. And I think it's big for the whole industry as well. I think that it's great that you guys are the beta testers because uh, like you said, especially being a company that doesn't have to listen to shareholders and it's a family decision. And uh, I know the, the I, I met uh, at Cruise World, the people that are in charge over there in Italy and, and Switzerland and great, great people. So I know they, they not only consider them family, but the employees of the company's family. And it's, true. it's very important to them that everybody has to say, do we do this? Do we not do this? And I'm glad that they stepped forward to do it. So very great. And I'm happy about the seashore. I love the seaside. Uh, that's here in Miami as well. Yeah. Um, now, I know we got some great news about MSC coming to Port Canaveral. Big, big news. Uh, you know, I've been here for four years and I've, and I've always worked the, in the Central Florida area. 
And whatever cruise line I was ever with, I always wanted to have ships right in my backyard. And um, of course, I left NCL a, a year or two before they put a ship in Port Canaveral. Um, and MSC has only been in Miami since I've been there. But, uh, but yeah, starting in November, we bring the, the uh, MSC Seaside into Port Canaveral. And she'll do three, four, and seven night cruises starting uh, November 1st. So she'll be there uh, up until uh, the end of March. And then she'll be replaced by the Davina coming into Port Canaveral doing the same three, four, and seven night cruises throughout the rest of uh, 2021. So it's uh, definitely big news for us to have a ship in Port Canaveral and, and in Miami. We think that, um, you know, as we get back into cruising, we think more guests are, are going to want to cruise, but may want some shorter cruises to first to kind of get their feet wet a little bit, which is why we're really offering the, the, the three and four night cruises that we'd really never offered before on a, on a, a large scale basis. So we're going to be doing three, four, and seven night out of both uh, Port Canaveral and Miami. And you'll be focusing so, on your new private island in the Bahamas. Oh, uh, we are. And I'll, I'll tell you, uh, the opening of the private island could not have come really at a better time. Um, so the island opened up at the first week of, uh, of December of last year. Um, I was lucky enough to go the second week of December and see the private island, Ocean Key Marine Reserve. And uh, it's beautiful right off the coast of Miami, about 60 miles out, um, it's just south of Bimini beautiful island and um, it's really going to be the focal point of our cruising to start with. Um, we're going to be doing, um, you know, previously we had done like a full day there. So seven in the morning or nine in the morning until midnight. We're going to use the island more now. So we're going to be doing some overnights there. So we'll be spending like seven in the morning until 6 p.m. the following day. So a full two days on the island. The island is a very easy area to to be self-contained. It's our own private island. There's no other guests there. So it's really a safe spot that we can keep within our bubble as the, as the Caribbean opens up to, to cruise passengers. So um, although we'll be going to some other ports, Ocean Key Marine Reserve will definitely be the focal point of, of, of our three, four, and seven night cruises starting out. And just to let my clients know, I have posted that uh, Echeveria Travel is doing uh, a birthday bash cruise on the MSC Davina April 18th sailing out of uh, Port Canaveral for the seven day. We're going to the new private island, uh, Costa Maya and Cozumel, Mexico. So we all know that our, a lot of our birthdays, whether you were born in April or I, I'm a big Disney fan. I know you're not, this is not Disney, but on birthdays, anniversaries, whatever you missed in April, come and join us, have a great time. We'll be celebrating everybody's everything and uh, we hope you get a chance to come and join us on that sailing. All information is on my website, my Facebook, and Instagram account. So a little shameless plug there. And hopefully nice. They're going to love the Davina. Oh, yeah. She, she's a lovely ship. I love her. Uh, the, the big thing that I, I have to, again, applaud you guys on is um, when I go on the MSC cruises, I don't feel like I'm walking onto a indoor mall kind of thing. A lot of the cruises now you walk in and there's stores and there's bars and everything is like just shoved in your face when you first get on there and you're not sure if it's a mall or a cruise ship. <laughs> I like the feeling that it's still a classic cruise ship. The cl still the classic design, the classic feel because I think sometimes and again no, Everybody's different. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Believe me, I have clients that go on everything and for everybody. Yep. But for me personally, I just like that classic feel and classic style. And MSC gets got me from day one. So that, that's all I have to say about that. Very um, nice. We appreciate it. Yes. Uh, you're also different in the way, the way you do categories, especially the different included and non-inclusion options from Bella, Fantastica, uh -huh. Maria. Can you go into what exactly they are and so my clients know the difference? Sure. What we basically have is really four different what we call experiences. And they are Bella, Fantastica, Aurea, and the Yacht Club. So let me kind of go over each one. Um, Bella is basically the least expensive. So you can buy an inside Bella cabin, an ocean view, or a balcony Bella cabin. Um, when, you, when you purchase that cabin, um, 
Again, it, it, it's the least expensive way to go. So the cabins themselves are, um, are going to be kind of weird to say it in, in the least desirable areas as far as where cabins are. So if you have an inside cabin, it's going to be on a lower deck. It's going to be more to the front or the back as opposed to midship and on a higher deck. The same with the ocean view and the balcony cabins. Those are on a lower deck and typically more forward or aft as opposed to being midship. So the Bella experience, basically, um, you have specific cabins that are assigned to it. And with the Bella experience, I kind of say it's like cruising like 25 years ago. So you pay for your cruise, you get on board the ship, you have your free entertainment, you've got your free food, um, and you have your cabin. And that's pretty much what's included with Bella. Uh, there's no extras, there's nothing, drink packages or anything free that comes with, that automatically comes with Bella. Um, um, Bella, the, the couple of downsides to Bella being the least expensive is that when you request your dining, your dining is not guaranteed being like a main dining or a late dining. You basically have to wait until you get on board the ship to find out exactly what your dining is, even though you've put in a request. So your dining is not guaranteed uh, as far as whether you get the late, the main or the late. Um, although you can always change it when you're on board the ship, that's not a big deal. You just don't get it confirmed in advance. The other downside to Bella is that if you want room service, you have to basically pay for it. So it's $4, uh, $3.99 per delivery if you do like room service. So that's, that's really Bella. Um, I try and talk most people to, to going into the Fantastica category. Fantastica, your cabins are going to be on a higher deck. They're going to be more midship. Um, with Fantastica, when you're requesting um, your dinner reservations for main or late dining, you automatically get what you want, and you know right when you book whether you're going to have the main dining or the late dining, which is important to some people. Um, also, with room service, you don't have to pay for room service at all. So room service is all included uh, if you do like to get room service. So there's no charge for that. So those are really the, that's really the upgrade from Bella to Fantastica is really the fact that your cabin's in a better location, you get the room service at no charge, and of course your, your dining is confirmed right when you make your booking. And with Fantastica, again, you have inside ocean view and balcony cabins. Did you have a question? You thought you were about to say something. Say something. No, okay. I do. I'm sorry. Um, my phone was ringing, so I had to mute myself. So. Oh, that's all right. Uh, so that that's very good because a lot of people ask me, and I go into the detail about it when I say, "Well, what's why is this pricing and interior different from this pricing of an interior?" And I just just read them exactly what it is and the experience that they'll they'll find on board. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have, uh, of course, the Aurea and the Yacht Club. So the Aurea is only for those guests who want to book a, um, certain balconies or suites. And the Aurea comes with a bunch of other stuff. So the Aurea, they automatically get a drink package when they book the Aurea. Of course, the cabins are in great locations. They're very midship. They're going to be, you know, and there's balconies and suites involved there as well. So they get a drink package. The cabins themselves are in a great location. They also get a spa treatment package. So they get... Um, uh, eat, the first and second guests in the cabin both have access to the, uh, the thermal area of the spa, which is really nice. You know, you've got the jacuzzis, the, the, uh, the saunas down there. You've got the ceramic benches that, uh, that heat up. You can lie on. Those are really nice. So you get, you get access to all of those things. And then the first two guests in the cabin also get them, they each get a massage. That's part of the Aurea package. Um, so, and then one other thing involving dining, Aurea guests don't have to select a main or a late dining. They can go into the main restaurant and main restaurants and there's basically an area that's set up for them for any time dining. So they can go in and show up anytime between 5.30 and 9.30 and be seated and eat and not have to have a, you know, be stuck with a main or a late dining time. So it gives them that flexibility. And then last, we have the Yacht Club. Now the Yacht Club is definitely a step up and uh, I'll tell you, we just get rave reviews about the Yacht Club. People who sail in the Yacht Club love the Yacht Club. They don't want to do anything else. And it's a great experience. So we call it kind of a ship within a ship concept. Um, first of all, to go into uh, uh, the Yacht Club area, you need a special key card. So not every, all guests can go in. You need a special key card to get into the Yacht Club area. All the cabins are very, very nicely appointed. They're uh, you know, they've got the, the memory foam mattresses, the silk, color, the, the, the high thread count cotton sheets, the pillow menu, the, the mini bar in the cabin, all of that. Um, so the Yacht Club is just, 
the cabins themselves are awesome. Plus there's a lot of other public areas as well, just for the yacht club people. So they've got their own fine dining restaurant called La Muse. And again, they can eat in there anytime for breakfast, lunch, and dinner without having a reservation. They've got their own nightclub, or not really nightclub, but lounge called uh, the Top Sail Lounge. It's, a, it's right below the bridge. You have the best views off the whole ship besides the bridge. You've got floor to ceiling picture windows. So it's a great place to be in and having a drink or maybe some light snacks. And you're looking right off the front of the ship. It's just an incredible area. You've got music in there at night, light music and always some finger food and things like that. Um, the Yacht Club also have its, has its own pool up on top of the ship, its own pool and its own deck area. So uh, they've got butler service, concierge service, and all of this for a little over $2,000 a person. So it's a huge value for all you get to oh, be in the yacht. It's amazing. And uh, I like saying it's like you're getting a, an all-inclusive resort <coughs> cruise wrapped up into one. And I have to say MSC is one of the most affordable cruise line out there. They're not cheap, they're not expensive, but oh my God, everything that they offer, especially the entertainment on the ship. Every day, it's something else. One night, it could be opera. One night, it could be Broadway, and it's all their own staff and entertainers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we were on the seaside during Christmas, and the great Christmas shows they had on board, it, it was just amazing. And, uh, you know, it. it I, I, I just enjoy, like I said, I'm a big fan. So everything I, I did say about MSC, I'm always gushing about. So <laughs> forgive me. It, it's it. a great, it's a great product. I yeah. love it very much. And you um, mentioned, you mentioned price. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny because we are, of all the, of all the, the leading cruise lines out there, we are, we are pretty much priced the, the least expensive and it's got nothing to do with the product. It's really just because we're not as well known as, as some of the other guys right now. So until our, until our name is, is more out there, um, you'll probably find our prices a little bit lower than everybody else. So, uh, so it's a, an incredible value when you cruise with MSC. And some of the great promotions too, especially if you have kids, they have great kids clubs out there. Some sailings have kids sail free with a paying adult on, in the room with them. So yes, yes. definitely um, check them out. We'll make sure we, at least I will make sure I check the dates. Uh, but if not, even the third and fourth person in the cabin is not, it's very reasonable. <laughs> and a seven day cruise is only $190 per person to make your deposit. So they really do have a great product and definitely would love for you uh, to book with Echeveria Travel to get yourself on board. And whether it's November or April, or whenever you're planning to go, let, let's, uh, let's start planning now. Because I know, just like all the other tour operators out there, everything was rescheduled, everything was postponed, mm -hmm. and those existing clients come first that rescheduled. So people that are looking now to cruise to wherever you're gonna go, you really gotta start looking for 2021 20, 20, and 22, because if you're looking for a certain date, a certain sailing, it may not be available because of the rescheduling that went on during the new normal we're going through. So make sure yeah, to book early and do payment plans with me. We'll set up a payment plan option. And, you know, I've been uh, speaking about that on my Facebook Live on how to plan and how to pay for your trip. So check them out on our Facebook page. Uh, Tom, any other new information coming out that I didn't touch on today that you may want to me and my clients in on? Well, I, I think it might be important for people to book, um, if they're going to be sailing in the first part of 2021, probably to book earlier rather than later, because as the, as the lines are, are coming out to, and bringing their ships out, um, they're not going to be coming out at full capacity. They're going to be coming out at 50 to 70 percent capacity. So those cabins are going to, the cabins I have available are going to sell, they're going to sell pretty quick. There's a lot of pent-up demand. So I just recommend people you know, looking and, and, and booking earlier rather than kind of waiting later. Um, because again, you know, the ships, the ships are not going to be going out at full capacity and, uh, um, you know, there won't be as many cabins to buy. And uh, you guys are at still 90 or 120 days prior to sailing for final payment. So final payment with us for all categories, except for Yacht Club is 90 days. Okay. Uh, Yacht Club is 120 days out. Okay. Great information. 
again, Tom, thank you for coming on today. We really appreciate you being a big uh, partner with Echeverria Travel. I've been doing this uh, almost 12 years now, and I really enjoy working with MSC and looking to see the seashore being on Divina and see what else comes out for all of us. Be well, be safe, and thank you for being on today. All right. Thank you, Cheryl. We appreciate your partnership and support. Take care. All right. Have a good day.